Okay, so today I'm going to show you guys how to linearize your graph uh, for your speed of sound lab. So you've already created a graph that looks like this, your wavelength versus frequency graph. Uh, this was a curve, right? And then whenever we did a power fit on this, uh, we should have gotten something that has x raised to a negative exponent. We're hoping that exponent is something close to negative 1. So if, if, if the power fit, if the best fit is going to be y equals some number times x to the negative 1, what we're basically saying is there's a relationship between the wavelength and frequency so that wavelength is the y variable is related to 1 over the frequency, which is the x variable here. So I want to take this data and I want to do something to it in order to turn this into a straight line. So let's talk about that here for just a second. So to make our graph more useful, we will change what we are plotting to make the graph linear. A linear graph will allow us to calculate a numeric value for the slope, and we want that slope to be meaningful. So in this case, we really want that slope to be the speed of sound in air. That was our overall goal of this experiment, is to determine an experimental value for the speed of sound. So let's start here. So we have the wave equation. The wave equation says the speed of a wave equals its wavelength times its frequency. Now, the speed of a wave is constant for any given medium. So you performed this experiment in my classroom. The speed of sound, uh, or the sound wave itself, is moving through air. So the speed of sound should be constant while you're in this room. So I'm going to rearrange that equation so it looks like this. So the frequency equals the velocity times 1 over the wavelength. All I did to get here is I multiplied both sides by 1 over uh, wavelength. Uh, the wavelength canceled on the side where it had frequency. And then we're left with velocity times 1 over wavelength. Now this equation looks a lot like y equals mx plus b, where b is going to be 0, so we don't have any plus something over here to the right. So b is 0. y is the frequency, so frequency is over here on the left. I've got my y over here on the left. m is going to be the velocity, so the slope here is the velocity, y equals mx, y equals m. And then the x is going to be 1 over lambda, or 1 over the wavelength. So we already have a whole lot of frequency numbers, but we do need to figure out what this 1 over wavelength is going to be. Okay. Now, if we were to plot this, if we were to graph frequency versus 1 over wavelength, it should give us a straight line whose slope then is the speed of sound in air. So let's go ahead and look at making that linearized graph. So we're going to use the extra column in your data table to calculate a numerical value for 1 over wavelength. So here is my data again, and I've just made another column over here. I'm going to call this 1 over wavelength. The units are going to be meters to the negative 1 or 1 over meters. In order to do this, I'm just going to hit the equal sign. I'm going to make a formula for all these. You could do each one individually, but a formula would be easier just to, to drag and copy everything down here. So I'm going to do the equal sign, and I'm going to do 1 divided by this cell here. In this case, that's going to be C2. And then I hit Enter. And it calculates that out. So all this number is 0.63 is just 1 divided by 1.6. Now I want the same formula in all these cells below. So I'm just going to select this cell. I'm going to grab this little um, square over here in the corner and drag this down. And it just calculated all my values. It calculated all my 1 over wavelength values. So 1 over 1.04 is 0.96. 1 over 0.74 is 1.35, uh, etc. So now I have a whole lot of frequency values. And I have the corresponding 1 over wavelength values. So if I come back to here again, remember, if I graph frequency, so frequency is going to be on the y-axis, versus 1 over wavelength, this should give me a straight line. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go insert. I'm going to choose a scatter plot again, like we did for the last graph. There's my scatter plot. I'm just going to move it over here for a second. I'm going to shorten that column. Okay, so move that over here for a second. I right click and do select data. I'm going to add a data series. Now my x values are my 1 over wavelength values. So I select that and then highlight that, that column there. For my y values, I'm going to get rid of what's in there already. And I'm going to select all my frequencies. And then I hit OK. And OK again. So there's my data, right? That's a lot more like a straight line than the data set I had before, right? The data set I had before curved down, had a nice little inverse to it. This is much more of a straight line. I do want to go ahead and change my layout here, and so I'll choose that first layout uh, just so I can add some labels here. So this axis down here is my 1 over wavelength. That's in meters to the negative 1. 
This axis over here is my frequency. That's in hertz. And for a chart title, we'll just say uh, this is a frequency versus 1 over wavelength graph. Okay. And I'll get rid of this little box right here. I don't need that. Okay, so there's my graph, right? So that's my frequency versus 1 over wavelength. It's a lot more linear. I'm going to add a trend line to this. So I select my data, I right click, and I do add trend line. Let me move me out of the way there. Okay. Oh, lost it. There we go. Okay, so it starts off, it's a linear trend line. That's what I want to fit to. You see the straight line goes through my data pretty well. I'm going to scroll down here. Now, I want to set that intercept equal to zero. Okay, we were talking about before when I rearranged that equation, there was no plus something term at the end. So my, my y-intercept needs to be zero. So I'm going to set that to zero. I'm also going to display the equation on the chart, and I'm going to display the r-squared value. Let me grab that. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger, maybe, so you can see it. Get rid of those grid lines. Okay. There we go. So this is my linearized graph, and now it has my equation that's here, right? So y equals m, this is my slope, times x. And I have an r-squared value of 0.97. It's a pretty good r-squared value. It's a pretty good fit. But when I look at this, my slope is about 270. Um, that's that represents 270 meters per second. That's going to be the speed of sound in air that I measured for, for my experimental data. That's really not a very good value. Um, your book states the speed of sound is somewhere in the range of about 340 meters a second. So the fact that I got 270, I was definitely well below that. Uh, and so what you're going to want to do with whatever number you get here, you're going to calculate a percent error. Uh, my percent error is going to be pretty high here. I, I don't really quite know why that happened, but uh, it's, it's not a perfect set of data by any means. But that's basically it. That's how you uh, linearize a graph. We take one of the variables that you graphed before. We do something to it. In this case, we in this case we calculated the inverse values for all my wavelengths, and then we plotted those those things so that I got a, a linear graph out of it. Okay, hope that helps.